Okay, so I got myself a new book, Modern Gasoline Automobile. The Modern Gasoline Automobile. Here's my Monty Python pointer. Uh, but as you can see, revised and enlarged. I know the, the printing is starting to go for a, a dump here, but it's the 1919 edition. So uh, 100 years old. Now, these, these videos that I do, that are no Suzuki related, you know, they're no SX4, they're no Vitara. Um, they're not very popular. I don't care. This stuff interests me. The, uh, it'll get a couple of views and that is fine with me because um, if I find this interesting, maybe a couple other guys will find it interesting. That's good enough for me. As I said, um, the core material will always be the Suzuki stuff. I'll get back to it, guys. I can promise you that. But um, I do like to endeavor in, uh, in other stuff from time to time. So um, thanks very much for the new subscribers. I think uh, there's multiple of them. I, I certainly can't name them. I'm sorry. Uh, but I appreciate you guys watching. Um, as I said, uh, I know most of these are here for the Suzuki content. But um, I, I'm my attention span is way too short to just stick to one subject. I bore easily and I need to uh, mix it up from time to time. So um, back to my book. Um, I just picked this up the other day in a used bookstore, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I think I paid 60 bucks for it or something. It wasn't cheap. They, they, these used, used bookstores, they, they, know what, uh, they know what stuff is, um, is worth some money. And um, what we're going to discuss this evening is actually the Model T's ignition system. It's a really unique ignition system, and uh, I'll show you the details. So here's the, the Model T as a whole. Um, the, the points of interest that we're going to consider here today, uh, as I said, is in fact the ignition system. So on the, um, on the, uh, the steering stock itself, there was actually a rod for adjusting the timing. Yeah, it was, it was manually adjusted, the timing. That's how you ended up with people breaking their arms when the timing was too far advanced, when people would try to start the, uh, the Model T through the starter, the handle. Didn't have an electric starter until much, much later in production, of course. Uh, the production was for 1909 to 1927, if I've got my numbers correct. I think they made a very, very few of them in 1908, but to 27, and um, I think they made 15 million of them. That's a lot of cars. Manufacturers should be so lucky to make a uh, 15 million of anything these these days, right? So anyway, um, there is in fact a stock uh, for controlling the manual timing. The timing was actually adjusted by um, rotating the um, commutator. It's called sometimes it's called the uh, switching unit. Um, they use different terminology for it, but basically it, it looks like a distributor. It's not a distributor. It's actually on the uh, low tension side of the circuit that we'll look at, but you could uh, you could operate the stick and advance the timing or retard the timing um, by rotating the commutator relative to its internal switching. Um, there was a, a box on the uh, dashboard itself that actually contained four individual coils. So the concept of coil on plug, coil near plug, where there's a coil dedicated to each individual cylinder is not a new concept. The Model T was doing it 100 years ago, plus. Um, so inside that box on the dashboard, of course, there is the uh, four coils. In addition to that, there's actually uh, some switch gear that allows you to switch uh, um, the magneto uh, on or off, or you can actually go to battery mode as well. Um, there was a dry cell that was used uh, for cold weather starting purposes, because the magneto didn't put out much uh, uh, much current um, and the magneto is actually not driven not gear driven not belt driven on the engine itself but it's actually an internal part an integral part of the flywheel itself I should say there was a shroud on the back side of the engine that actually had the coils and I think it was 16 uh, permanent magnets that were attached to the flywheel so so long as the flywheel was rotating uh, i.e. the engine was running the uh, the permanent magnets were actually uh, rotating uh, inducing current in the coils the magneto of the system that actually drove the uh, the coils themselves so the entire system is actually an AC system there's no DC unless of course it was operating in battery mode 
but in the normal mode of operation when the car was actually running, it was actually all driven via the magneto, which of course is AC generation. So that's just a quick overview of the system. Um, just trying to think if I've actually forgotten in here. I don't think so. I think that's about it. Of course, there's high tension leads that come off the coils. Um, control wiring that goes to the low end side. High tension uh, wiring that goes to the spark plugs themselves. So we'll see that on another drawing. The, uh, so this is the front end of the engine. The, uh, here's the starter handle. As I said, there is a commutator which actually does the uh, switching for the uh, coils. It's the timer basically of the system, right? It was cam driven. So when the uh, cam was rotating and the applicable uh, cylinder or piston uh, was ready to actually uh, develop power, power stroke uh, requiring ignition, of course, uh, the spark would come uh, delivered at the correct time via the timer or commutator assembly as they actually called it, of course, camshaft driven. So the uh, control wiring, as I said, would go up to the uh, box that was mounted on the uh, inside uh, of the vehicle, on the inside of the dash. Uh, but the, uh, the towers would actually, for the HT side of things, would come through, the, uh, come through the dash onto the firewall side of things, and of course, down to the plugs. So inside, four uh, separate coils, buzz boxes, uh, trembler coils, as they call them in Europe. Um, operate in pretty much the same way as a, a doorbell essentially right so we'll, we'll look at that when we actually get to the schematic momentarily um, but just so you can appreciate all the uh, uh, physical layout of the the system and of course here's the uh, the bell housing if you will for the um, for the flywheel and the magneto assembly actually inside um, all inside the housing here so yeah that's the uh, the physical layout of the system we'll take a look at the schematic there's permanent magnets that would be uh, rotating on the flywheel on a shroud. There was the uh, coils, they were series wound. So as the uh, magnets actually rotated, of course it would induce a current into the, uh, into the system. So the switching was, uh, as I said, on the uh, coil box mounted on the, uh, on the dash. It would give you the option to select what mode of operation you actually wanted and would actually supply um, low tension, uh, low voltage, uh, to the uh, primary coil of the buzz box or trembler coil itself. which would allow us to induce the primary current into the secondary uh, coil and develop the high tension that would be delivered to the spark plug of course so there's not a lot of detail here I will show you yet another drawing that will show you this in, uh, in more detail bore the hell out of you with some more details about this because I find this actually super interesting again I'm hoping maybe somebody else does so primary and secondary Operates a lot like a doorbell, as I said. Uh, we'll show, it, we'll see that in more detail in the uh, in the next drawing. And here is the timer assembly itself, which is cam driven. So it applied the ground to the system. So uh, the hot side, if you will, coming in on this leg to the primary uh, coil, and the ground being applied via the uh, timer or commutator assembly. You can see here they're actually calling it a timer. Uh, they use the terms interchangeably, as far as I can tell and it actually applied a ground to the system and, um, and actually uh, afforded the spark delivery to each cylinder when it was actually called for. Of course, it's essentially the distributor, though, although as I said, it's operating on the low tension side of the circuit. Although I can't, I can't tell you definitively, and I don't pretend to be any Model, X, Model T expert, not by a long shot. Um, I think this is essentially a multi-spark discharge system can't see this actually delivering a one spark in the duration of the uh, of the switch actually going around. I think it's a multiple spark system, um, which apparently worked fine. 15 million units later, somebody got it right, right? So again, we'll see uh, all of this in actually more detail in, uh, in another drawing. Okay, so I think this, uh, this schematic actually shows things in a wee bit clearer detail. However, it does show a battery here. So um, this is just a generic drawing uh, of a, a multi-coil system. So disregard the battery, uh, although it could be a battery. As I said, there's two modes of operation, a battery and a magneto. But um, don't get too hung up on that same battery. It's essentially the same thing. So um, again, there was a, a switch which was mounted on the, uh, on the coil box itself that allowed you to either operate the vehicle or shut it down, obviously, either mode, battery or uh, magneto. Um, and here was the coil assembly itself. So um, when I said the uh, doorbell, I should, probably should have 
been a bit more succinct on that. Uh, what I was talking about is an electric bill. Um, so you can see here that the current would actually come on uh, up, uh, the, the hot side anyway, would come up to the primary, uh, would flow through uh, a closed contact. And actually, so long as we were getting the ground from the timer or the commutator assembly, uh, a magnetic field would form here, opening the uh, contact. Of course, that would collapse the magnetic field. And as it did, as it collapsed the magnetic field, the primary, uh, uh, through of course mutual induction uh, would induce a high voltage a high tension voltage into the uh, secondary and that would be distributed to the applicable plug so long as the timer was actually in sync with the uh, let's call it the request uh, <laughs> for ignition from the applicable cylinder so that's as simple as it is um, uh, you can see a little condenser that was mounted within each coil assembly um, just a traditional like point system uh, to extend the life of the, uh, the contacts and actually um, cause a bit more of a rapid dis uh, dis dissolution of the uh, of the uh, primary uh, field. So uh, same 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 with respect to the uh, condenser function and the uh, essentially the points, if you will, inside the trembler. Again, this whole thing was operating multiple times, depending on how quickly uh, how and don't forget these engines. Obviously, it didn't rotate at very high RPM. I think it was quite possible that you'd actually end up with multiple sparks at the uh, at the uh, the spark plug during the uh, during the power stroke. So, anyway, I thought that was uh, I thought it was kind of an interesting system. So, in closing, just a quick look at the uh, the, the actual photographs of the system. So, here's the uh, the flywheel. Here's the uh, the permanent magnets mounted here. And the bobbins are actually shown. Um, sorry, I'll move this up. As I said, this is the rotating portion of the system with a gearbox here. And uh, on the shroud uh, was uh, bobbins with the coils, of course, mounted, as I said, wound in series. And uh, there's what the horseshoe magnets actually looked like. Not really a horseshoe magnet, but they referred to it as a horseshoe. Uh, but I think there were 16 of them around the uh, readily mounted around the, uh, the flywheel, of course. As the flywheel was spinning, it would induce the uh, current into the coils. And there's a quick look at an actual wooden box with a switch on it that was mounted right to the dash itself. As I said, you could uh, select the system to mag or off or a battery, I believe. I'm no certain about that, but from what I've read, apparently that's how it actually operates. Um, one last picture. Uh, here is actually the timer module or the, uh, the commutator as they call it. And again, you can see the uh, little roller switch assembly here as it rotated around. It looks very, very similar to a distributor, not a distributor because it was on the low tension side of the circuit, uh, just a switching unit, commutator or timer as they, uh, as they call it. So anyway, uh, that's it. Quick look at the, uh, well, maybe not so quick look at the, uh, the Model T's ignition system. I hope uh, some of you guys actually found it interesting. Again, I don't expect too too many people to watch this video. A handful of people will watch it, and uh, and that's fine because uh, I pride myself in actually making stuff that's a wee bit different. Um, I can't, I, I just can't keep knocking out the same stuff about oil changes and uh, brakes. I mean, there's a million of them on YouTube. Uh, uh, you're welcome to go watch them and i don't want to sound cheeky by saying that it's uh it's just i don't see the point in doing it if, if there's no uh if there's nothing new if there's no uh i mean this stuff is no new but it's so old it's kind of new to most people um it's certainly new to me until not too too long ago and and imagine there's some young guys if you're still with me watching this that this will be mind-blowing if you're really interested in this stuff this is phenomenal engineering i think it's i think it's brilliant Anyway, I hope uh, somebody enjoys it as much as I did. That's it, boys. Cheers.